The struggle grits my chin, but fortitude kissed my lips and revolution danced on my tongue. Lace divine signatures all through my melanin. Cause if the creator be the Godhead, then I be the hand holding the pen. As it is written, everything I claim has been given, preordained and determined by right. So when I write, no, it is no parlor trick, for I am no magician, and this performance be no magic act. But my poetry is an act of magic. What's good? <laughs> Peace and blessings. I am so excited and nervous as hell, but more excited than nervous. I am very nerve sighted <laughs> to be with you all tonight. But luckily for me, Voices in Power is a place where artists call home. And we know what they say about home. Home is where the heart is, right? And my heart is abundant and fully present here with you all tonight, especially as I bring to life, stripped directly from the pages of my new project, Crowned in Melanin, and I'm bringing to you tonight, Crowned, the poetry set. <laughs> Had to take a little moment for myself. Um, but before we kind of dive right on into it, because I do want to respect the time, uh, I got a question. So I'm going to need some crowd participation. So if I asked you what the greatest love story ever told was, what would you say? Just... Say that again, can you? Aww, that was cute. Jordan okay. Weezy Jefferson. Oh, okay. We're taking it back. I like it. Oh, shit. <laughs> the Huxtables. Okay, y'all got some good ones. Y'all got some good ones. Hey, hey, now, there we go. I like that one. Okay. So, oh, okay. Bay. Shout out to Jay's Bay. <laughs> so, in that same vein, if I asked you what the scariest horror story ever told, what would you say? Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Oh, <laughs> that movie was more funny to me. Mmm, heartbreak, America. Now you want something? Want something? Mmm. Losing a parent. Mmm. What if I told you they were both one and the same? That the most beautiful horror story ever told, ever witnessed, ever lived, is black love and loss. Generation after generation. It's like traveling through history, loving you through time. In fact, we started time. It began with us. Now, maybe we can't say for certain whether or not this love affair began in a garden, but there must be a fall from grace in our lineage somewhere. We were cast out of humanity's gates forced by translucent hands to endure an eternity of star-crossed fates. Her trauma reincarnate, looming large and inescapable. The reincarnation of black love under white supremacy, though. It is as incredible as it is infuriating. It is warily indescribable as it is inundating because who would choose to keep loving in a world that insists on hating us? We know there's more to life than just death. Know there's more to strife than just heartbreaking lessons, but I'll never learn mine when it comes to you. I love you from the moment I saw you as I do every time. I knew I wanted to procreate and continue our bloodline. But we went to war before the bridal tribute with a neighboring faction and lost. In this dispute over land, you were a casualty. 
So I never felt the warmth of your hand anywhere but on the grace of my cheek when you bid me goodbye. Oh, how I prayed, chanted, and danced well into the night, as is our tradition, in hopes that the gods would return you to me. But they didn't. And I'd live and die and live several times more before I found you again. Still proud, still strong, still fighting for our people as you have been since the age of 15 when you begin to publicly support the NAACP. But that charming smile wouldn't grace mine eyes until we were 20. Quickened heartbeats be the funeral procession that plays as I watch you walking toward me. How much love will this lifetime grant us this time? By now, you're heavy into your work for CORE, Congress of Racial Equality here in Meridian, and that didn't leave much time for courting. You taken several freedom ride trips as I waited in fear, rejoicing every time you climb back off that caravan. Your embrace dissipated all my worry, and for a moment, there was no civil rights movement, just us. But fate always catches up. And one fretful night after your voter registration volleys, you, Swerner, and Goodman were arrested for a traffic violation. Although released the same night, the whites of your colleague's skin couldn't make you white or worthy of getting out of Mississippi alive. Deemed guilty by two carloads of the Klan, disappeared you all in an instant. They each garnered one bullet to the heart, but you, the only black man there, earned three. And it would be 44 days till they found your bodies, and I would go 40 more without sleep, and century on century until our souls crossed again. This time, grew up together as kids. I guess we knew it then. Our mothers certainly made enough jokes at our expense, but we fought it nonetheless until we couldn't. Reunited in college and finally gave in to that ancestral pulling like magnets. The expanse of your aura sung to me. I, 24, you, 25, eight months post-marriage were blessed with the gift of sunshine. Oh, how your excitement exploded when I told you. You took me in your arms and we danced to music that wasn't even playing. And we'd repeat this ritual again and again in the months to come until my feet were just too swollen to step. It was almost time to welcome your namesake into our lives as he had already consumed a great deal of our hearts. But when the time came, Something was off. You weren't there. Both our mothers stood by me in your stead, but you, baby, on my strength. How was I supposed to do this without you holding my hand? More than a birth plan, the life's plan was to do this together. Where are you? I want to be angry, but something in me screams, it's happened again. No. I concentrate on pushing the pain in my chest, rivaling the contractions, and then he emerges at 6.02, quiet at first and then loud as can be. Your eyes, ears, and lips appear to have been shrunken in place on his handsome little face. Later, I'd learned that mistaken identity was the case. Shots fired at 549, pronounced DOA at 601. Does the story behind the bullets even matter anymore? It's like I go my whole life longing for you, letting all my desires pass me by until I find you and I know it's you. My spirit never lies. You amplify and elevate my divinity like no other man could. Heartbeat quickens as it only does for you and you are mine. But even when I have you, 
I don't get to keep you because they keep snatching you away. You know, maybe I shouldn't care no more. Maybe I shouldn't love no more. Maybe I don't want to live no more. Not if being alive is but a tease. Not if every time I find you and love you, I lose you to their hate. And yet, it's embedded in my DNA, the gift and curse of loving and birthing black gods. So no matter how many times this life strips our time away, I'll always muster up a seed of strength to love you again. Because I see you out here surviving, and I'm trying to survive too, so baby, please, keep seeking and hold on to me. And I'll keep waiting and hold on to you. Let us all have a collective breath, breathe in, and exhale. Today, let no funeral processions play, not today. Today, let paper back and turning pages be whispered kisses into the palms of black men everywhere. Let paper back be soft landing and gentle push into the fold. In this moment, let my love, this old, be documented proof and recycled affirmation that you are respected, that you are necessary, that you are loved. Kings, you are crowned. Thank you. So I could break that uh, first uh, piece from the book, The Reincarnation of Black Love, I can break that down and talk about that for days. Um, because even though it is written from a romantic lens, you know, we are loving and losing each other in so many ways that go so far beyond just a physical death. And the resiliency that is black love and why it is touted like, oh, you know, why has it gotta be black love? Why can't it just be love? Because to love and be committed to something in today's society with the struggle, with the depression, with just the pressure in general of being a functioning person in today's society, do you know how exhausting it is to love something outside of yourself? Do you know how exhausting it is to love yourself? So that is one of my favorite pieces. And while we are talking about blackness, because Crowned in Melanin is a love letter to blackness, when you love something, you also want to hold it accountable. Because, you know, black culture is beautiful, but it is also toxic. So, I'm going to read this next piece straight from the book. It is called Small Silence. I don't remember how young I was. But I do recall learning it the hard way, as many children in restrictive or dangerous households often do. That little bodies aren't built to carry free things. Not speech, not expression, not autonomy, nor will. They are built or broken to merely carry what adults have chosen to give them. But little bodies are just big enough to house secrets the nooks and crannies of vulnerable bodies present all the right places to tuck lies in if you're depraved enough. And that's the thing about depravity. It is pervasive, piercing, and all too silent, about as quiet as tiny little voices dwarfed in fear. 
choking on what predators force them to swallow, fearful little bodies longing to sing freedom songs, not simply to be heard, but to be protected. My freedom doesn't sing. I was never taught the words. My freedom doesn't dance. I haven't the rhythm. My freedom doesn't play anything. Grief plucked my heartstrings until they were broken. Shame hammered into my truth until I went death. Tightened my tongue to roof of my mouth until it melted into hard palate and no longer exists. For predators make percussion of little bodies, beating. Drumming, drumming, beating, beating so loudly on little bodies too young to sound off verbally, too quiet to get the attention of someone who give a damn, at least gain the ear of someone who could recognize the muffled sounds of abuse. Little known, well known, but often ignored fact. My girlhood died in hands of a man my mother loved. Strangled out in a grip that stole my innocence last breath, buried it beneath an attic, sick ambition, so, so heavy, too heavy to move, too heavy to run, too heavy to fight back, little bodies aren't built to bear that weight in any sense. My body interred my voice alongside my innocence, while my mother's neglect left his grave unmarked, so here lies Nothing. May it RIP rest in poetry because we don't talk about it. That's that piece. I want to be intentional with what I share and how I share, and I affirm that I am not the sum of my pain. I am not the things that have happened to me or my trauma. I am safe. I am healed. I am loved, honey. And I am living accordingly. So back then, I didn't have the voice, I didn't have the words, and if I had the words, I didn't have the voice uh, to speak them. Uh, so one of the biggest things about me as a person, as a fiance, as a mother, above all else, is to make sure that we know the importance of our voice. And when we learn the importance of our voice, we must reinforce its value, be seen, be heard, I'm gonna give you this deep throat. A woman with an open throat is a threat. In fact, she's more than that, more than dangerous. She is determined. She is a defiant declaration dismantling the depths of disrespect. More than a disruption, she is a detonator ready to blow shit up. At times, she grows weary, but remains steadfast in coming for everything that is equitably hers. You can tell her no 47 times, but it is her supreme right to court her dreams, and that's word to Katanji. A woman with an open throat has a voice. She will rebuke you and your secrets. No longer will she swallow and house your lies in her belly, aborting your complacency, daring to delineate the dichotomy of womanhood, of being subhuman and superhero, of being subservient and yet superior. And if you want the rest of that piece, you got to buy the book. Yeah. And if you bought the book, you got to read the book, okay? <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah, thank you. So the book is only $25. Only $25. I love my poetry community. Um, <laughs> so, yes, definitely, you know, see me uh, at the end. 
Um, I want to call women to the front if you are willing to come fill in the gaps. Not trying to move my kings out of the way, but I have something to say to you, especially, and this is not leaving anybody out, but my black women, because, um, hello, <laughs> I am a black woman. So I give you my life and I give you my art through the lens of a black woman living in America that finds interesting ways to tell us they don't give a fuck every day. But that's okay. Ladies, you two are crowned, crowned in education, crowned in your resiliency, you are crowned in your ability to love over and over again and learning to love yourself. You are crowned in divinity and this next piece will be my final piece and it is especially for you, DJ Geek. Check. Can y'all hear me? Thank you. If the original Eve bore depths of melanin in her skin, then it is fair to reason that black women are the only beings who've ever given birth to themselves. Could you imagine being tasked with such a splendid feat, birthing a version of herself, birthing humanity? If that isn't evidence of God, then I don't know what is. Now, I'm not saying God is a physical black woman, but we bear the qualities of one. Giving birth to black suns like the blackness of the sky gives life to the sun, the planets, the galaxies, every entity of light can all be seen in a space of darkness. When the black woman emerged, the entire atmosphere stood agape in the bluest of midnight. A creation so powerful, she breached the sky, stepping out from the heavens, glow of her skin dusted in stars. She is a star. Far removed or too distant, burning too hot and too magnificent to be contained. I said, she is far removed from the bullshit, purposefully distant from all the broken versions of herself, burning too hot in all her glory for negative vibes to penetrate her aura, and too goddamn magnanimous to be put in anyone's box. Now, I'm not saying the physical black woman is God, just she carries the essence of one. From her crown to her hips, when the next being of divinity emerges, she will hold them in her holy, imprints unperverted scripture upon their forehead with the kiss of her lips so that this time they shall remember from whence they came. She will give them the heavens and every child will know that they can find redemption and rebirth at their mother's feet.
I want to thank you so much. I love you too. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for taking this journey with me tonight. Um, it is an incredibly scary, exciting, but scary thing to say I am going to take a collection of my hearts, little slices, put them in the book, and literally ask people to pay for it, okay? And make it reasonably priced because, you know, poets would be charging everybody a million dollars for their poems, okay? <laughs> but it means the world to me that you stayed that you listen, that you exchange energy with me. And I ask that you please tap in with me on Instagram. I am Lady Siren. It's L-A-D-Y-S-Y-R-E-N. So it's just Lady Siren, but it's Siren with a Y. And if it ain't got a Y. It Thank you so much. If you're going to mix and mingle, come mix and mingle with me at the table. Come buy these books and these shirts, y'all. Thank you so much. On stage rocking, I'm still crazy. Coco flow like 1980s. Come lit, still I drop lazy.